All right, good afternoon. What we're looking at now is the time value of money and we are using a number of examples to work through and figure out exactly what we're talking about. All right, so we know if we look at something, if we have a $100, right? If we have $100, we have a choice, we can take it now or we can take it later, right? Which one do we, what do we want? We want $100 right now or do we want $100 in a year from now? Well, the fact of the matter is we want that money right now, right? And so in order for me to agree to accept $100 in one year, right, is that it is worth less than that to me right now, okay? And that's one thing that we need to really make sure is really, really clear up here is that I would not be willing to pay more than $100 to receive $100 in the future, right? Let's think about this. I'm going to give you $105 right now. In a year, you can give me $100. Yeah, cool, right? No, that's not cool. Okay, so whenever we are doing this, this is the process of discounting, right? Is that we take that $100 in the future and we discount it back to today, right? So our basic formula that we're using when we're looking at this is that we're taking our present value is equal to our future value divided by one plus R to the T power, okay? It's a fundamental one here. We have our T as our interest rate, excuse me, T is our number of time periods, R is our interest rate, we have FV, which is the future value, the amount that we actually get in that future time period, and PV is our present value, okay? So if we're looking at something and we're like, all right, we have a payment in the amount of $500 in five years, all right? And then let's say that I also have the opportunity that I could have all this money that, right, so this is a payment. Right? I'm receiving $500, a single payment of $500 in five years. Okay, So this is going to be worth something to me. It's going to be worth less than $500 to me because the amount, the money that I could pay for this is that I could then stick it into account somewhere. I could buy some stock with it, whatever. Okay, So we're going to say we have here an opportunity cost. Okay, Our opportunity cost is that discount rate. Okay, which is telling us that that is the rate at which I could put my money in something else. Okay, I could take this stock, and I, excuse me, I could take this money and I could put it in Apple stock, right? And let's say that my expected return is say six percent. Okay, that's just what I, I expect that I could gain over the next five years is six percent. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and figure out how much this five hundred dollar payment is worth to us right now. Okay, right now, right at this very moment, how much is this $500 payment worth to us? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put this $500, right, because that's our future value, and we're going to divide that by 1 plus R. R is 6%, so it's 1.06, right? Remember, when we convert that, it's 6%. We move the decimal point two places, 0 0.06, right? And then it's going to be raised here to the fifth power. And we show a present value here in the amount of $373.63. Okay? And that's telling us that is what it's worth to us right now. Okay? So, basically, in order to think about this in a little bit clearer here, is that if we enter an agreement and said, hey, I will write you a check. I will give you a check and I will pay you $500 in five years. Okay? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to come up with what the value of that payment is right now today. We know the value of that is going to be less. Okay, So if we came up and agreed on a price of $373.63, that means um, that essentially what we have here is that if you paid me $373, excuse me, $373.63, for this $500 payment, you, you paid that out right now. You paid that out of your pocket right now. I will pay you $500 in five years. You paid that out of your pocket. What you could have done otherwise, right, instead of giving me that money, is that you could have bought Apple stock and earned a return of 6%. Okay? So when we're looking at this now is that we want to determine, right, we came up with a value here, 373.63. Okay? Now, if I had said... All right, I will exchange $500 in five years, right? And I will sell this, I will sell this payment to you. I will give you $500 in five years and you pay me right now $350. Should you do this? Yes, 
Why? Flat out because it has a value. We came up here. It has a value of 373.63. This is its actual value. 373.63 is its current value, and I'm offering to sell it to you for $350. You could buy it for less than its value. Yes, it's worth it, right? It's going to basically make you $23 right off the bat, okay? However, if I said, so yes, you will absolutely buy that. However, if I said I will sell it at $400, okay, I will sell this cash flow to you for $400. You think it's worth $373.63, but I'm trying to sell it to you for $400? What are you going to tell me, right? Get out of town, right? So the essential part that we're working on right now is that we are trying to come up with a value. How much is this worth to us right now, okay? Because capital is limited. The cash in our, in our accounts is limited. There's only a certain finite number of things that we can do, right? You can either buy cash flows from me, you can buy cash flows from other people, you can buy stock, which that's also an additional cash flow in the future. So all the stuff that we're working on right now, this is all just showing us, okay? We are coming up with a value today and we are relating it to a time in the future, okay? Hope that makes sense, but we got a couple more videos on this topic.